Hi guys, your BIM guy Sam here today with another new Revit tutorial. Now in our today's tutorial, we're gonna focus on to energy analysis using Autodesk Revit platform. Plus, we'll see the collaboration between Autodesk Revit and Autodesk Insight, which is a cloud-based analysis engine, which will enable you to go through the sophisticated energy analysis. Now let's get into this. So in order to start doing the energy analysis, as you can see, we do have the demo model that we're going to work in. So this is our demo model that we're going to uh, work on it. So you can just like simply open up your model. As you can see, it's a very simple model that we're going to work on it. So the very first important stuff that we all need to make sure that is everything is all good with this model is to have an Autodesk suited account. So in order to make sure that uh, we'll have the student account, if you do use an uh, student account, so you can just simply go there and just sign in into your Autodesk A360 account. But if you're not having the account, you just like need to simply reach out to this website, which is the Autodesk website. As you can see um, here, if you just like simply Google that up, you'll see that how simple it is and you just like need to reach out to Autodesk um, Education Community webpage and just like fill up your information and subscribe for that. So as you can see, you can just simply uh, reach out to the website here up there, you can see create account. So you need to just simply uh, click on it. Then down there, you just like need to fill up your information, make sure to agree to the um, privacy and the terms and simply uh, click on create account. Then you will receive an email, just like uh, reach out to the email and simply click on it to make sure that your account is getting activated. Once this whole process is done, basically you get to have an Autodesk account. So then you just simply go to the Autodesk Revit main page here, open up the model and simply click up there on sign in. So once you click up there, you can just simply click on sign into the Autodesk A360. Need to put on your username. There you go with your password as well. All right, as you can see, your status is getting changed here to your name. This means that right now you are signing as an Autodesk user, which will enable you to reach out to the Autodesk inside, which will enable you to do the whole energy analysis there. All right, so now, since we're all fine to start with this, there are some sort of um, very important factors in this energy analysis that you guys need to know which I'll, I'm gonna just simply walk you through this. So basically the most important part of the energy analysis is to know what is the R values, which is the thermal resistance plus the heat transfer um, coefficients, which is U, which uh, there are somehow a reverse re, uh, relation or relational. So um, basically you need to know that how uh, set up your model initially in, in a way that has the best and preferred rates that are recommended by your code. So here, I just like want to show you guys a quick picture of what I got from the code that it is recommended to have this sort of thermal resistance exactly assigned to our elements. So our important elements that I'm going to walk you through them and make sure that you guys are all going to be good with them. We, we initially going to set them all up and then later on we'll go to the optimization process. So as you can see, we do have exterior walls, we do have interior walls, floors, roof, windows and doors. So that is like what is suggested through the code. I highly recommend you guys to try to implement the same sort of resistance or like thermal resistance on your model if you can, as much as like the model just like uh, let you to do that. But if you wouldn't be able to exactly do the same, you can do that like partially. So partially you try to assign this uh, thermal resistances and also at the same time you just like with the rest of them, you just like stick with what is like on the default version. So now, 
to show you guys that how we basically can see all the sort of uh, thermal resistances or heat um, transfer coefficient which is all the same you can either see that or this one right uh, and then later on, I'll just like walk you through each and every single element to see that how we would be able to adjust them and make sure that they're all compatible. So if you want to see the whole page that basically simply demonstrate the whole um, uh, parameters, you just like simply can go through the analysis tab up there. And then there you go on energy setting. So if I simply click on energy setting, you just like scroll down till you find on advanced then next to the other options you simply click on edit you go just like simply down and here on schematic types you can simply click on building there you go with this main page so as you can see here we do have roofs exterior walls interior walls ceilings floors slab doors windows and skylights so um, part of them are just like simply set up as the default version. The other half is basically exactly adopted on our own model. As you can see, as an example here, we do have the exterior wall. So as you can see, the type of the exterior wall is eight inch lightweight CMU with the insulation that basically enables us to have the heat transfer coefficient up to 0.38. So that is something which, if you do remember, was sort of recommended by the code because into the code was recommended to have the exterior walls to basically have the thermal resistance between um, starting from 13 up to 20 or 25. So if you have, let's say, somewhere around like R11, it's almost like close to the range that we want to have, at least as an initial setup. So um, just like giving you an example that how you're supposed to set up everything initially in a way that basically fits the best, right, to what we're seeking for. And then later on, once we go through the whole analysis, Revit will give you all the optimization options that which one would be working the best for you. So don't worry for that. I'm just like showing you and uh, basically giving you a tour that how these sort of parameters are working in Revit and why it's super essential and important to basically pay attention to that. Now let's take the first step. I simply just gonna click on okay and okay and start from scratch to show you guys that what are the most important uh, steps to basically run your energy analysis. So the very first one is to simply set up your location. So what I'm gonna do here is to go through the location up there from the analysis tab. So you simply go there on location, you click there, and on location, you can just simply type down your location. Once you click on search, then those sort of available stations are simply getting popped up. Click on one of them. And as you can see, those are the stations of the, or like weather stations that you can go with. This is the most closest one to the Montreal Island. So I'm simply gonna get stick with to this and simply click on okay. So as you can see, this is the station, the weather station that we're working with it. And this is the, um, basically the main station on Montreal that we're working with it. So simply gonna click on okay. As, as easy as you can see, the location is all set. Now, what is important is to basically see that how we would be able to exactly come up with this model or check our thermal resistance parameters through each and every single element that we're having here. So as you can see, those are our exterior walls, right? So I simply gonna click on one of them, right? As they're all the same and simply click on edit type. Here, it's super important to see these sort of analytical properties. As you can see here, we do have the heat transfer coefficient U 4.24 and also the unit is super important if you're not seeing the same units I'll just like simply show you how to fix the unit let me first show you how to fix the unit if you're not seeing the same so if you wish to set up your unit you simply need to press on the unit shortcut which is UN so simply press UN there you go with this 
window. Simply from the drop down up there on discipline, simply put it on energy. And here, let's say uh, next to the thermal resistance, you can simply click on there. Make sure to put this on square meter Kelvin per watt, or you can use the other one. This is the one that we're working in this project. And also for the coefficient of heat transfer, you can simply go with this one. And as you can see, I've put it on custom. That's it. Again, let's get back to the wall that we were working on. So here on to the edit, I was just like showing you guys that what are the sort of parameters that we're having for this wall. So as you can see, the R value for this wall is four. The, um, it is basically, um, according to what we saw um, initially, this value should be somewhere between 13 to 20, right? But as we are having almost the closest heat transfer coefficient, U, that was basically set up also on the other page that I show you, right? On the energy setting. So if you do, do remember, initially I show you guys that those are the heat transfer coefficient. So as you can see, our heat coefficient trans, our trans, uh, our heat transfer coefficient are uh, simply getting matched with what we have on each element plus on energy setting. So we simply gonna get stick with into this. Later on, once we get into Autodesk Insight, there you can see that we would be able to play with different options on thermal resistance. So for the initial setups, we just gonna get stick with the heat transfer coefficient. So as you can see for our exterior wall, this one is on 0.24, which I would be able to see that also here on energy setting. So again, if I click on energy setting, click on here, down there from the building, if you simply go with the exterior walls, you can see that this one is 0.38, right? And basically it's eight inch, so the type of the properties that we're using with our walls is pretty much the close, which I show you. But as you can see, the um, heat uh, transfer coefficient is almost like the same. So as long as you can see that, okay, look, they're super close to each other, that will be all fine. You don't need to be worried about that. Now let's click back again on wall and simply go on to the edit type. This time, I'm just gonna go further and show you the structure behind this. So as you can see, we do have here 0.21, uh, meters of our concrete machinery unit, which is almost like the same eight inches of CMU as you basically saw earlier on our energy settings. We also have the rigid insulation here, which is almost like around two feet or something. So as you can see, the whole uh, sort of wall composition or wall construction are exactly getting matched between what you can see here and also what you can see on energy analysis setting. Plus, as you can see here, the heat transfer coefficient is exactly almost matching with what we have on energy analysis setting. So that is like what, what is important and what you guys need to know about the U or R values. Simply gonna click OK. Basically, you have to make sure that all these U values or R values, one of them, you just like need to stick with one of them. In our project, we are getting stick with the U values. You just need to make sure that initially the the ones that basically you have set it set them up on energy analysis setting is all the same with what you can see on each and every single element here. So our job is all done for the exterior walls. I just simply gonna click on roof and make sure that what I'm seeing here is also the same and it's matched with what I'm have on energy analysis setting. So simply click on roof, click on edit type. As you can see here, the heat transfer coefficient for our roof is almost around 0.58, right? And also the type of the structure that we're having with it is somewhere around, again, um, I, I believe it should be somewhere around eight inches, but we'll, we can just like simply make sure that it works or not. Or in order to make sure that uh, the units are all fine, I can simply click on UN and change the um, project uh, parameters to basically inches. So I simply put it on feet and fractional inches. Now 
I wouldn't have any sort of problem converting the units. So again, click on here, click there. So as you can see, we're having almost around eight inches of our concrete, right? So we are having eight inches of concrete and also around almost roughly two inches of the rigid insulation. Plus the heat transfer is somewhere around 0.58. So click on okay, go here again on optimization tab, energy setting, just uh, scroll down, other options, again on building. So you would be able to see that on roof. As you can see, six inch heavyweight concrete with two inch insulations and it's 0 0.68. So we're like pretty much close to what we have here. Also, would like to let you know that as you can see, since we already checked this override boxes, this means that Rivet uh, is genuinely going to only take into account these values here. So basically, simply Revit is going to ignore what you have already put in each element, right? And it's only going to follow the ones that you already choose from here, right? But since we just want to be professional and would, um, just want to make sure that what we are choosing between energy settings and also the each element are simply matching together is always better to make sure that they're matched. But since we already checked these boxes and we have already set up this table, we have this peace of mind that those sort of values uh, I mean like U values or R values that Revit are going to take them into account for the energy analysis are in good condition. So basically you need to make sure the sort of the same process for each element, right? So simply click on OK. Now here to just get into access to our interior walls, I simply going to click on this roof, then from this temporary height isolate, I'm simply going to hide this element, click on this interior wall, click on edit type, again you would be able to see the heat transfer coefficient, plus the wall compositions that we're having with us. So as you can see it's a metal stud layer and uh, it does also have the gypsum wall board, it, it's um, somewhere around like 1.5 inches. Uh, this is the thermal resistance, this is the heat transfer, and if you just simply check that with what we have set up on energy settings, it's pretty much getting matched. Okay, so you're simply gonna click on here and reset the temporary height isolate. Alright, so we're all fine for basically roof, exterior wall, interior walls. If you just simply hold the shift and the scroll button on your mouse, you can simply uh, rotate on your model and simply from the corner you can click on the floor. So if I simply choose the floor I would be able to make sure that what I've chosen for the in terms of 4. So as you can see my floor is having the heat transfer coefficient of 4.64 and also the concrete um, thickness is somewhere around 6 inches. So that's what you can do, or if you just like sum them up, it's almost around eight inches, as you can see the total thicknesses. And also up there, you can see the whole uh, unit resistance or thermal resistance. So as you can see, this model has already set up all these sort of uh, U values in a way that basically matched with what we have on energy setting. So simply going to make sure that everything is fine in terms of our windows and our doors. So everything needs to make sure that the U values or the R values are at least working. So this time I'm simply going to click on this window, go to the edit type. As you can see here, you can for the doors or windows, you can simply just scroll down till you reach to analytical properties and then next to the analytical construction you can simply choose the one that is working the best for you. This one that we have put it on schematic type is the one that is basically on default. So I'm just going to get stick with what we have on default and also at the same time it's pretty much fits with what we have in our own project. So I just like have this peace of mind that my doors and windows are also safe and well working. So simply click on OK. So that's it for the 
thermal resistance and also heat coefficient, heat transfer coefficients that is super important to pre-set up our energy analysis. So once this sort of stuff is done, then we have to make sure that how this sort of analysis are gonna get computed. Either we have to use the spaces or the room setup. In this analysis, we have using the, the room analysis, which would be through the architecture tab and choosing the basically rooms and assign them to each and every single spaces or rooms here. So if I simply double click on level one, you would be able to see my um, basically room legends, as you can see. And if you simply click on tag and go on edit type, you would be able to simply check the show area box and uncheck the showroom number. All right, so as you can see, each room is exactly um, obvious that how much sort of um, area is getting assigned to it and what is the occupants, uh, occupation. Now, uh, here, uh, one important thing that we just like need to make sure that everything is fine with it is to basically go up there on architecture tab on room and area. So simply click up there and click on area and volume computations. If you simply click there, just make sure to check this box on areas and volumes. So this will help the energy analysis to, you, to use the room legends or room um, assigning stuff. So simply click on OK. And uh, the next step is to basically make sure that all these sort of rooms that we already assigned to our model basically are using the proper height, the one that basically is designed for. So that is the reason that why I basically um, already drafted down this section in a way that pretty much covers all the uh, rooms here. So I, if I simply click up there, now you would be able to see our room legends here. If you're not having the same sort of colors here, you just not need to simply go to the annotate, simply click on color field legend and simply put it there. Then you would be see the spaces in color. So now if you simply click there, now you would be able to see the height of the height of the space that is getting used by this room. As you can see, this is not the proper one right now. That should be somewhere around here, as you can see. So I just need to make sure that the one that we're having here is pretty much close to one which is to reality. So simply click on here and control C this one. Right, this one is basically better working on. So simply gonna control C this one, meaning copying this one. So I just need to put the upper limit on level two and this is the limit offset. So if I simply go to the level one, I can simply click on each room tag, make sure that this one is on level two, and this is the value for that. Level two. So that is all perfectly working. And the last one is also perfectly working. So also our room settings are all setups and also adjusted to what we're exactly using close to the reality. So once these sort of settings are done, then we need to simply go to the analysis tab or analyze tab up there and simply go through the energy setting here. So simply gonna click there. Now, as you can see, use building elements, ground plane level one, almost like the settings are all perfectly working. There are just like simple stuff that just need to make sure that is basically matched to our analysis. So I'm gonna simply show them to you. Simply go to other options, click on edit. Since the type of the building that you're using is for just a single family, I just simply want to navigate down till I found the single family. So simply put it on single family and also the type of the facility that we're using should be 24 seven facilities. The HVAC system should be on this, as we can see, which is pretty much close to what we're using in this project. That is all fine. 
So here you can either go with the conceptual types or schematic types and also make sure to check this box. Here, since we are using the uh, basically nothing to do with our mass, we just need to go with schematic types. So simply click, click there, make sure to check all these boxes. And basically those are all what we have um, already set up in a way that perfectly matches our project, as you can see. So everything is fine. Simply click on OK and we are almost ready to do the analysis. So once you're done up to this point, then you need to create your energy model. So simply just bring your point viewer on the create energy model icon up there on analyze tab. Simply click there and click on create the energy analytical model. So as you can see, you can see the 3D visualization of your energy model. So your energy model is also done. Now we just uh, one step away from initiating our uh, energy analysis here. So now to in order to initiate our energy analysis, we simply need to click on generate up there. So simply click on generate and use our existing energy analytical model. Click on OK. Now your model is automatically sent to Autodesk inside cloud platform analysis and you basically simply gonna receive an email telling you that your model is received there and basically the analysis is in progress. Once the analysis is done, simply you're gonna receive an email back that your analysis is completed and now you would be able to optimize your model. So up there, you just like need to wait up uh, until you receive your completed model. So as you can see, the analysis is done right now. And in this point, we just like simply need to go to the Autodesk Insight platform. So in order to go there, you just like simply can click on optimize icon here. So if you simply bring your point viewer up there, you would be able to see the optimize. So simply gonna click there on optimize. And as you can see, here, automatically, Revit will just simply bring up the Autodesk inside the website on your browser. So you don't need to do anything. You just like simply click on optimize and automatically the inside the web page will basically pops up. Now, I simply, before going through this, I'm gonna go to the back to inside, click there. So we'll show you how this works. As you can see, I'm using my Autodesk um, a360 uh, account to be able to use this platform. So this is the model that we just basically did the analysis on. Um, the very first important thing that you guys need to pay attention on that would be some sort of settings. So simply here, if you click on setting, you would be able to see the units that basically um, you guys are discussing about the project then you'll see the annual cost or the EUI. So depending on your parameter, which one you would like to go with it. Now let's stick to annual cost first. We'll show you guys that how, what's the difference between this sort of stuff. But the most important thing here is the currency and utility rates. So here you just like need to make sure that which one uh, you just like need to look them up and simply insert them on your Autodesk Insight platform. So as you can see, the currency that we're using is CAD and simply click on utility rates. So those are the utility rates for electricity rate and gas rate that I just looked up on internet. And uh, basically those are the values that we're using for Canada. So simply click on apply. And now we would be able to basically dive into the optimization process. So simply gonna click on our model. Okay, so as you can see, the very first value that just like takes all the attention is this one on orange color. So as you can see up there, uh, I would be able to see 119 CAD over square meter over year. So what this value basically mean is that um, this means that if you want to hit up one square meters of this specific uh, building, basically it would be, you have to basically pay the price of 119 per year per each square meters. 
So that is basically some sort of the index that we would be able to optimize over this model that we're working on this energy analysis. Also, if you simply click there, you would be able to see the other value, which is EUI, right? Which for this one is 747 kilowatt square meters over here. Again, if you want to hit up this space, for only one per each square meters per year, that is the kilowatt that basically you need to spend on this space. I just like simply gonna click on there to bring it back on what we have on 119. So right now the target is to basically be able to reduce this price almost like to, to the point that basically match the code or the standard of what we're having here. So if you just simply navigate down, you can see the benchmark comparison. As you can see on this bar, we do have ASHRAE 90.1 and also architecture 2030, right? So those are two basically important um, standards that we basically want to do this comparison all let's say till the place that we reach them so for our target right now is to basically reach the architecture 2030 which basically we have to do this sort of optimization through all these options that basically we have here so instead of just like changing each and every single settings on our Revit uh, basically model and then do the analysis again, just like trials, iteration, one after the, the other to come up with some result, uh, basically we would be able to see different sort of options on our optimization by simply through these ranges that I simply gonna walk you through these sort of ranges and then later on, I'll show you guys how to set up the scenarios, which is the most important part for our report. So basically, you guys are supposed to come up with a report per each uh, energy analysis. And on this report, it is super important to make sure that or let's say to um, to exactly um, highlight on what are different scenarios that basically has the most efficiency or are the most effective to basically do this optimization, right? So in, in let's say in the case of the um, limitation on budget or like something, if we had to do the, com uh, the compromisation on this um, sort of optimization, what are basically the most and the best effective uh, factors that we can just simply stick to them so then we can optimize this model up to the architecture 2030 limits. So here simply in order to start this, um, basically I also want to show you what it means to have the location here. So if you simply click on location, you would be able to see the lo location that you are working on also, this is the weather station. So if you simply click there, you would be able to see the weather information in terms of the um, basically ups and downs in, in weather temperature and also the wind uh, charts here. So it's also good to snapshot these sort of charts and put them in your report as well. Now, simply let's uh, simply get back to our building information model, as you can see here. So this is the bar that we're gonna work on. It. In order to basically start working with each and every single um, option here, we have to basically make sure that each option is simply gonna categorize under one scenario. So our <clears throat> first scenario is gonna be for wall window ratios. So I simply gonna uh, adjust the wall window ratios for all the southern walls, nor northern walls, western walls, and eastern walls. And then we're gonna see them all together as in one scenario. So in terms of, in the case of we just like want to optimize the energy analysis with only this scenario, so then you guys would be able to see that how much basically will benefit from this if we just simply only and only stick to this scenario. So in order to start this, I'm gonna start with window wall ratio for the southern walls. So simply click there. As you can see, this is the initial price 
per square meter per year that we're paying to hit up this space, right? So just keep this in mind. So you have, let's say, a benchmark to compare. Right down there, you can see the chart, which is for the window wall ratio for the southern walls. And this is the cost that you're paying. As you can see, uh, each um, stage basically is on the circular, basically grip, except this one, which is called beam. So this beam basically is the one that um, simply demonstrate the current uh, situation of your model. But since uh, we are basically on the more pre preliminary um, period of the whole design process, it's better to stick with ranges that one specific basically mold. Because here it is, uh, as you can see, there are a lot of uncertainties in our analysis here. So it's better always to stick with the ranges. As we can see, since we are working for wall window ratio, um, it is more less frequent to have, let's say, nothing opening at all. So right now, the situation that we are having on our own model is 11% of the opening. So I just simply going to limit my ranges to here. So definitely would never have, the, let's say, less than what we have here. But also, let's say up to 40% would be something that would be fine. So this shows that by simply limiting the ranges from what we have to, let's say, the possibility that we could have as potential to grow in our analysis, which is up to 40% of the opening or wall window ratio, at the same time, just $1 or what um, $1, $1 we got reduced on the bill that you can see here. So that is like what we have for the southern walls. Simply just close this one. Now we're going to go to the next one, which is the northern walls. Here, as you can see, again, this is the current situation that we're having. So again, I'm just simply going to limit this to here and this one also to 40 percentage. So that is like what maximum I could have, which is 40 percentage of the opening parts. Again, as you can see, we have $2 reduced here from 118 to 116 here. Let's go to the next one. As you can see, the current situation for our Western walls is to have no sort of openings at all, right? So what I'm gonna do is to simply stick with what we have because according to the design, as you can see, we are not having any sort of opening on our Western walls. So since this is the analysis that we want to have, we have this certainty that basically we're not having opening here. So just like simply um, limit the ranges or the grips to what we have here. Close this one. Let's go to the Eastern walls. For the Eastern walls, again, I'm just gonna repeat for what we have for the Southern and the Northern walls, which is that. So as you can see, basically that, that was what we had for the wall window ratios. So now, since I just want to make sure that all these sort of changes that I can see here on model history, I want to have them all as one scenario so I can refer to them, uh, let's say whenever I want. So simply gonna go up there and simply click on add scenario. Click here, rename the scenario, and simply put WWR. So right now, I just have this sort of flexibility that whenever I just want to make sure that this factor is getting effective on our energy optimization, I can simply assign this to either this model or the rest of the models that I can later on have the analysis with this. Now for the second scenario, we can go with window shades. So for this one, let's stick with window shades right now. So simply gonna click on window shades on south. So this is the current situation that right now you can see. As you can see here, we have the um, shades starting from two over third window height, right? So as you can see, the one that we are having here is 0.36 CAD over square meter over a year, which is almost like zero percentage, which is almost like no shades. 
what I'm gonna have is to basically have this so it is possible to have two thirds of the window height basically covered with the shade all also at the same time this would be let's say starting from here so this means that I do have other from one third of my window getting covered with shades up to 20 up to two third of this window getting covered so that is basically the range that I'm having for my window shades on the southern windows now let's go with the north one for the north one still I'm gonna have the same here So definitely I'm gonna have some shades, which is starting from one third to two third of the windows. As you can see on the um, basically walls that we are not having any sort of openings, as you can see, almost the price is on zero dollars right it's legit zero dollars this means that even like using shades is not helping out at all because we're not having any opening so um it's basically we did the uh, optimization on this but since we're not having any opening as if like we have done nothing onto this so basically there is no point to to do this for this specific project right now window shades east to here and that's it so that was for the window shades so simply gonna go up there and add the scenario for window shades like that and also I can see from this model history that we started from almost 119 and right now we are having this price with only 112 so so far you're having almost around seven dollars um, reduce on our energy bill per year okay the next one could be the window glass so it's simply going to click on window glass this is the current situation that right now we're having with this model so as you can see if i simply click on there on the grip you would be able to see the type of the glass that we're having here so let's say if this is the current situation i'm gonna have either this one or gonna get better something let's say two three pill um, basically glasses that we have or ideal double but we're not gonna end up with something let's say as a single one so simply gonna go with this one on north Again here on the west, as you can see, since there is no opening, so then even changing the type of the glass for the window will not helping at all. But we've done the part. All right, so that was for the window glass. Simply gonna go up there and add it as a scenario. All right, now the next one, the next one shall be with the wall construction. So simply gonna click there. So that is the current situation that right now we're having for this. As you can see here, the one that we're having is somewhere between R13 plus R10 metal or 40 inches ICF, right? So that is the current situation that we're having for this. So I'm gonna have either the one that we're using or something better as you can see here but definitely i'm not gonna get go back because uh just want to make our model like more optimized so the price that right now we have spent on this project seems to be good but also want to get something better right we definitely not going to compromise on the budget on this point because if we want to do that definitely the uh, costs are going to get um, basically increased instead of getting reduced so simply gonna stick this with this one so that was for the wall construction 
gonna go up there and make sure to add it as a scenario. Now let's do the same thing for the roof. So that is the current situation. As you can see, for our roof, we're just gonna um, increase or just simply improve our roof construction composition way better. So I'm gonna go with R15 to almost R38. So that is the ranges that later on, uh, I wanna make sure that our analysis is gonna get involved with this. So that was for the roof construction. Simply again, need to add it as a scenario. All right. What else we have here? We do have infiltration as well. So simply gonna click there. This is the current situation that right now we're having. So what we're gonna have, we're gonna basically improve on it up to reaching there. So that is basically what I um, think that would be the best for our own project, but we definitely needs to get improved on this to basically reach to this stage. Again, need to add this, add a scenario, simply rename it. Now let's get down there. Here on lighting efficiency, daylighting and occupants, uh, occupancy controls plus the plug load efficiency, what I want to have is to basically categorize them all in one scenario. So simply gonna go to light efficiency, gonna make this to here. And it's very slightly getting changed or better on this. And on daylight and occupancy, also gonna go with this. And if you wish to just like remain all the same, you can just simply stick your ranges to what you have on beam, right? So this means that basically, you're just gonna stick with what you have. Neither you're gonna get better or basically worse. So, uh, basically our model is going to start with what we have to basically to the part that we could have here the daylight and occupancy controls simply close this one the last one for this part which is uh, plug load efficiency so from here, we do have 21 starting and the other one is 17 one, right? So if I simply get stick to here, so this is what I want to have basically. So simply gonna go up there and add it as an scenario. Simply come down. Now the other important one is the HVAC system. So simply gonna click there. This is the one that right now we are using in our project. As you can see, since the slope is super, super dramatic, that means that basically we do have a lot of opportunities to grow on this, right? So if you simply, let's say, stick with this one, which starting from high effective VAV till, let's say, to here, which is ASHRAE heat pump, we would be able to save a lot. That was like where we were having our basically HVAC system, so we decided to have this or improve that up to reaching to $27 saving per year. So also gonna add it up there. 
So the more basically um, slope you're having on each chart, this means they do have, let's say, more effect and more, um, you know, they're like super more effective than the rest of the um, factors. So simply gonna add it up there, put it as HVAC system. All right. Now, the other one, which would be operating schedule, but first let's skip this one and keep with the, stay with the PV or um, basically the um, PV panel efficiency, PV payback limit and PV surface coverage, which would be super important. And basically we would be able to use more sun energy and uh, through this, panels that basically going to get installed on your roof, you would be able to save a lot on the energy analysis. So simply going to click on it. This one, I simply going to get stick with this one. So basically still you can see that slightly changes getting happen. I want to adjust the payback limit from 20 years to 30 years. That is the range that I'm going to stick with it. As you can see for 20 years, there's almost like no sort of changes, but as you can see for the 30 years is up to here. So we can just simply improve our basically design and reach out to the point to stay with 30 years. That will allow us to basically save up to um, $15. All right, this one also want to make sure that the surface coverage, the basically space that is gonna get assigned to these panels is gonna be starting from 75 to 90 percentage. So that was that is basically the price that we were paying for this um, analysis, or let's say for this optimization to get it better, but in return, we're saving $33, which is a lot. All right, so I'm going to go up there and add them all as an scenario. PV systems. Also, let's click on operating schedule. That is the one that right now we're having. So if we just like, um, we can simply stick with this, the one that we're having, or either we can um, compromise on the operating schedule to get something better. So I would say that we would have either this one or two here. So that would be sort of the ranges that we can have on operating schedule. All right, let's also add this as a scenario. So right now, as you can see, um, we reached up to the point that we're having $45.80 right now to basically hit up this space per each year for per square meters. We started from $119 and right now we reached to the basically $45. But still we're a bit away from the target that was basically set on architecture 2030. So we can just simply, um, you know, like improve the analysis, just like do, let's say more adjustments to basically get the better result. That is like what so far we have. As you can see, still up, uh, the HVAC system can play a lot. The role that basically this one can um, just simply, um, you know, like improve the, um, basically the pay that we have here, it's a lot. So you can just simply go further and um, improve this. So if I click on here, I can simply bring this to here. As you can see, still a lot is getting happen for the HVAC system. So if I can just simply improve my HVAC system, starting from ASHRAE package, terminal, heat pump, 
to let's say up to here that would be basically save almost around fifty dollars for me which is a lot also for PV panel efficiency, if I simply make sure that the efficiency is gonna get to 20%, that also gonna get help as well. Let's also do the same sort of um, improvement for our PV surface coverage, which will basically end up with having 90% on our surface. Also, if we can improve the infiltration, that will also help as well. If we can just simply have the 0.17 ACH, that will also save a lot. So, so far, that is the price that right now we're having. As you can see, we stay away from what we could have which is 11.5 dollars so if i would be able to simply reach the 11.5 the model would be in green and once the model is getting into green color this shows that basically um, the whole optimization target is a shift and you're having almost like the best sort of optimization possible but right now through this sort of analysis that you've done you saved a lot so you can either like continue on having let's say more sort of improvement on each specific uh, target to basically end up with something better let's say for building orientation as you can see building orientation cannot help as much as you can see in this specific design All right, so that is the final value that we've reached out to this project, which is $25.30 per square meters over here, which is the basically rate that you need to pay in order to hit up this space. As you can see, those are the final adjustments that we have done on this. So you can simply uh, go through them and make sure that basically this is the final one, or you can simply go further with this. But overall, we could have seen that on this specific project, we saved a lot, starting from $119 to $25, which is like a very big change. But still, we um, basically the architecture 2030 target was not achieved in this specific analysis due to the reasons that basically the setup that we have assigned preliminary for this energy analysis was also good enough. So as you can see, the more you set up your basically the preliminary design, I mean, in terms of the R values and the U values in a way that better um, basically um, be more optimized and be better in terms of, let's say, you know, saving and less wasting of the energy, the less work you're having here on the analysis. So if we were having, let's say, a building that in terms of the wall construction, wall composition details, roof, or the, the opening parts or the HVAC system, those sort of stuff were not basically, um, you know, uh, built in a good way, in an um, effective way with, let's say, proper and good R values or U values, then here we did, we did have to work a lot to be, to be able to come up with way better result. But here, since we already have a good setup on our file, basically that's the reason that, um, as you can see, the slopes on each chart is not that high, right? So that means that we already had a good setup on what we have on energy analysis and with only very slightly adjustment and changes, we would be able to still save a lot. So if we want to see that, how what is the basically uh, contribution of each scenario on this um, basically saving, I just like need to click on scenario compare. So then that window will just like simply shows up. As you can see, if you simply substrate the uh, each bar from the next one, you would be able to basically uh, come up with a real value that each factor 
genuinely has. So as you can see, the most effective changes that we've done is for the um, solar panels or the PV system that we adopted on our model, which you can see uh, earlier was $73. After doing this was reduced to $45. Then the second big one I would say should be for the HVAC system more than the rest. And also infiltration also uh, contributed a lot. So as you can see, um, at this point, you guys like need to basically uh, just capture this sort of chart, specifically this one, put it in, an, in your report, also with this one and your model history as well. So simply you can just uh, start to rank these factors that let's say on our PV system, which has, let's say the most effective one, that is exactly the saving price that I would be able to have if in case of using this. Then the second most one was, let's say the HVAC system. Then the third most one, for example, was the infiltration. So you can simply rank them. So in terms of, let's say, um, that let's say our budget was like more limited and we just wanted to compromise on this sort of analysis and stick with the, you know, like two or three scenarios, we can simply go with them. Because if we apply them, we could have, let's say, the way more savings than the rest of the factors. Because as we can see, let's say for the wall window ratios, as you can see, was super slightly the change getting happened, right? Almost like nothing has achieved through this. But compared to the PV system or let's say the infiltration, you can see that we could save a lot. So what you can do is to simply uh, just, for example, type down here, snip tool and simply Capture this for yourself, save it somewhere in your project, so then you would be able to later on put it in your report. And also from here, you would be able to see that, for example, for the wall window ratios, which one among the walls has the most effective one. Let's say this one for the southern wall, the other one for the northern wall, the other one for the western wall, and the last one for the eastern walls. So as you can see, um, I could say that the northern walls and the southern walls basically had the most um, saving um, effect than the western and the eastern part. So you can just simply add them all in your template, in your report, using also this sort of information, which is super important. Now, the last thing is to basically how you guys would be able to export all these charts. So in order to do that, you just like need to simply go on back to inside. And here you just simply click on here and simply click on export. So you can just simply select all or you can simply stick with energy cost, benchmark comparison and also factor widgets. So you're simply going to click on export. And as you can see, the downloading process just got started here. So later on, we would be able to see the whole charts. So then we can put them all into our file or report. So basically that is like the um, end of the analysis. So that is like all you guys need to do in terms of to come up with the full energy analysis. So uh, just like the only sort of point that I need to mention or highlight to make sure that you guys would be all fine with it is that um, definitely the goal is to reach the highest target of the whole optimization, which is architecture to an entirely target, right? But in some sort of analysis, you guys wouldn't be able to achieve there because um, sometimes, let's say, the more your setup the pre-setup of your whole project is uh, more close to the uh, optimized result, the less work you have to do through the uh, optimization. So that being said, the, um, the let's say, uh, final goal of the architecture 2030 sometimes is not achievable, like in our scenario. So that is the reason that why, why the final color of the whole optimization is still in yellow. Because if we would be able to reach to architecture 2030, then we would be able to reach to the green color. 
But that that doesn't mean that our model is not basically working out or let's say the energy analysis optimization was not properly done. Uh, but you can just see that yourself and make an experiment on yourself and see that the more you sort of like set up your project more on traditional sort of construction, traditional uh, materials, the more work you have to do through this energy analysis. So then the target of the architecture 2030 would be more achievable in that sort of scenarios. But in our case, since we already set up our sort of like design, um, let's say preliminary stuff in a way that was almost like close to the best sort of setup that we could have for our, the buildings, let's say more to recommended R values and U values that we're supposed to do in the codes, definitely the less work you have to do through the energy analysis. And that is the reason that definitely like we didn't reach out to this target, but we saved a lot. So that was like the main point, which was from 119 to um, the final value, which was somewhere around, you can see the up there from the scenario comparison, which was $45.76, which was like a lot. So uh, just like the last step is to come up with an report template. So that is the report template that I've come up with, as you can see. So you can just simply snapshot the same sort of pictures from the uh, Autodesk Insight platform to come up with the same thing. As you can see, we do have project location and model visualization. As you can see, that is the weather station and also the location. Those are all sort of charts that you can simply derive from the Autodesk Insight, as you could see. And also the optimization objective target, which was starting from 112 almost. Basically, we started from 119 initially. And then at the end, you can basically end up with $25.30 in this specific analysis. And also that, that one is the optimization effective scenario ranking, which you could see that what is the comparison between different scenarios that we went through them. And down there, you can simply just like put down your engineering judgment, what you want to say on this sort of um, basically optimization thing and also rank them. So I just like ranked them from, um, let's say, um, I just ranked three of most effective factors that we can optimize on our project, as you could see, which is PV system and also HVAC system and infiltration. So you just like rank them from the most to the least. As you can see, PV system, uh, since then, uh, you can simply export these charts Put them in your report and just write down your engineering judgment that what you need to convey to your audience about this infiltration hvac system and also the final conclusion that you want to convey out of this optimization to your client so that's pretty much what you guys need to start from the scratch to basically start and initiate your energy analysis through revit platform and autodesk insight Till ending up with the concrete report that can make sense for everyone who uh, has nothing to do or has any knowledge of um, basically has not have any knowledge of Revit. So you can simply convey all this useful and um, basically optimize information to them. Thank you so much, guys.